Well, hello, kitty. Look who's here. All our fans are out there. So I was thinking of uh, an idea for an open tag. And uh, my idea is um, looking at your last five knife purchases. Now, in the case of what I'm doing, uh, is I'm, I'm ignoring the ones that I got from like Smoky Mountain Knife Works or Swiss Knife Shop or Shepherd Hills Cutlery or something. I'm focusing specifically on my last five knife purchases from eBay. And I think that would be kind of cool uh, for other people to maybe try and do that if you're, if, you're, if you're an eBayer. Obviously, not everybody's an eBayer, but let's take a look at your last five online knife purchases. And if uh, you can do that specifically out of eBay, that would be pretty cool. Um, and so, as long as uh, I've said that, let me put my money where my mouth is and crack out my last five eBay knife purchases. We'll start with this box right here because this is the uh, the one that just arrived yesterday and it is another one of those Frost Family Series, uh, uh, what they call a, well, do they on this one? They don't on this one at least. They don't call this one a large toothpick. It is a Frost Family Series medium toothpick and this one is in ram horn. And, well, let's take a peek at it. Uh, I'm assuming it's supposed to be ram horn. Uh, if that's what the ram horn is supposed to look like, then this knife is not the ram horn. Because, But you see the, the little pouch on there. Uh, and here's the knife. Is that not nice and shiny? It does look like some kind of horn, but not ram horn. I got a feeling it's probably a type of uh, buffalo horn or some kind of other horn on there. Uh, at first I thought it was pearl, but it is definitely a horn. Got the shield going on there. Good action on it. And there's the blade. What does the uh, 440 stainless? Yeah, there is no... Uh, pattern number on the knife so there's no way I can ever tell for sure if this is the actual ram horn version or the buffalo horn version or what. Got a nice swell going on there too. Uh, you notice the brass liners and everything. Uh, that's one of the things uh, that can come up kind of interesting especially when uh, you're buying something that is listed as new old stock from a seller I've bought from the seller before, so I kind of trust the seller, but you can also see that it is a used box and everything else. Got a little shelfware. Um, for all I know, and it, was, it said it was from an estate sale, so this could have easily been mixed up in the box. But I saw what the knife was before I bought it. Uh, I mean, he showed good pictures of it and everything. But is this the ram's horn? I kind of doubt it. I got a feeling it's some other kind of horn. Pretty cool knife, though, and uh, almost white smooth bone, but look at that. It's nice and translucent. Very nice little uh, uh, medium toothpick in the Frost Family series, and nice and tight. So there you go. There's, uh, I guess we'll say this is number five. This is the one that just showed up uh, yesterday, my Frost Family series. A ram horn questionable medium toothpick. Now my next knife is hiding way back here. And uh, the person selling it listed it as a universal jackknife. Um, he mentioned it had a corkscrew and he explained what the hole there was for. Uh, but I saw it and it's like, yeah, that kind of goes with my collection. It is uh, very much a, a bartender style knife, so I do want to go ahead and grab it. And I did like the uh, shape of the handle and everything. It it does kind of look like a, uh, a Stanhope bartender knife, but this is not a Stanhope knife. And I knew it wasn't. It it wasn't just simply missing the, the little Stanhope magnifier there. That hole is there for a reason, and that reason is because of the blade right there. Um, this hole is really so that you can snip off the end of a cigar. And uh, I looked at the knife and I was looking at the corkscrew on there 
and um, they actually usually refer to this type of corkscrew as an auger worm. If you notice, it looks more like a, an ice auger than it does a, a, a typical corkscrew. And um, these are the older style corkscrews that are out there. And that was one of the reasons I grabbed it. I, I assume that this knife is probably from uh, um, pre-World War II, so probably sometime in the 30s. Uh, the company, the reason he called it the Universal Jackknife is because right there it is made by the Universal Knife Company. I do not know a lot about the Universal Knife Company. Uh, if I do a more extensive video on this uh, knife, I will explain about the Universal Knife Company once I do that. Um, I already mentioned it's got the uh, cigar cutter going on there. And, well, it's got a corkscrew here for pulling a bottle of wine. And uh, actually feels pretty good in the hand. All in all, it's just a, kind of a unique little knife. That's why I picked it up. Notice the blade there. It's kind of a, almost a cross between a worn cliff and a sheep foot blade. And like I mentioned, this is from the um, probably the 30s or 40s. At first, I was thinking that the guy had uh, or somebody had actually reprofiled the blade. But that's not the case. I mean, uh, that looks like uh, the way it came out of the factory. And uh, it is pretty sharp. It was not used a whole lot. You see a couple lines on there, but nothing dramatic. Uh, all in all, a really nice, good shaped knife, uh, you know, for a um, cigar cutter and a, uh, well, wine bottle opener. So I guess that's why they called it the Sportsman. In any case, that is uh, number three, or number four, I'm sorry, talking too long. So let's get those both out. Next up is right up front here, and that is right here a baby sunfish by a koei river by frost cutlery and i picked this one up specifically because of the um the um jigging pattern on the bone um, it goes with a couple other knives that i have i don't know what they called the jigging this time uh, do i have it listed here they just say T. I don't know what the T stood for, but if you notice there, that was their alligator jigging at one time, and I really like that jigging uh, in the uh, Steel Warrior uh, family of knives. Hold on just a second. Okay, the coloration isn't the same, but you can see the jigging on there with the, uh, the X's and stuff. This is the uh, um, alligator jig bone um, peanut. Here's my alligator jig bone um, stockman by Steel Warrior. And then we have this one here with the uh, the Koei River baby sunfish in the same uh, jigging pattern. So I like the jigging pattern, so I just went ahead and picked it up. And, uh, well, once again, you'll see, <laughs> I love how many of these knives say one of 500 on these blade edges. And you see those all over the place, one of 500. So uh, they must have made a thousand, 10,000, who knows how many of those blade edges. It seems like every frost cutlery sunfish has that one of 500 uh, blade edge on there. So I'm assuming that blade edge refers to the bone jigging on there. And you notice it's got the, uh, the little uh, fly fishing um, um, shield going on there. But yeah, just another little baby sunfish uh, that I had to go and grab. I got, you know, a lot of sunfish, so went ahead and grabbed another one. So there we go, the baby sunfish. And then number four is in the back here. And it is a Leol style picnic knife this time and white smooth camel bone and uh well i saw it and it's like should i get it shouldn't i get it should i get it shouldn't i get it and um it basically because of all those uh push daggers that i've been grabbing i saw it and it's like yeah this is one in olive wood yeah you knew there'd be more than five knives shown right in any case uh 
I saw this about the same time I saw that, and it's like, you know what? That really looks pretty. With the uh, the brass uh, bolster, the brass pommel going down here. You got the brass pins there, and you got that brass uh, collar right down the middle there. Um, very nice uh, little corkscrew going on in the back. And it's like, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and buy it. So I went ahead and bought it. It's got the little B on the top. I know all of the people in France are very upset about that because I'm sure this knife was made in Pakistan, um, especially considering the uh, the Damascus blade. But it's pretty sharp. And you know what? I really wanted a white, smooth bone Laol style picnic knife. This was the first one I finally found that looked halfway decent, so I went ahead and bought it. And uh, I'll tell you what, the uh, construction in it is not bad at all. And uh, well, as typical, if you let the blade hit, you're going to get blade wrapped. So I, uh, you got to definitely let it drop easily. The nail nick is totally worthless because, quite frankly, you don't need it to open this blade at all. Little, um, little tight right here, right at the top. Uh, you can definitely feel it. It like it, it's like it wants to have a half stop, but it doesn't have a half stop. It stops like there, and then well, it it stops there, and then there. So it ratchets a little bit. I have a feeling that Damascus might wear down a bit. I don't know. We'll see. Any case, um, my white smooth bone Laol style. A picnic knife. Um, I'm happy with it. And, uh, well, even with it being, um, you know, Damascus, I'm still pretty happy with it. And finally, the last of the five knives I picked up from eBay. And here we go. It is by Combat Ready. Uh, Friends of the old Knives Live TV show probably remember Combat Ready really good. Uh, I believe the series was actually kicked off by uh, Josh Hill back in the days of Knives Live TV. And um, the knives uh, at that time were being listed as having um, AUS 8 uh, stainless steel blades, what everyone today calls OS 8. I still refer to it as AUS 8 stainless steel but os8 stainless steel blades comes in a nice box this is like the second combat ready knife i've picked up um this one came in a really good box the other one came in a really crappy box and i picked it up because well i just don't have enough neck knives and i thought let me go ahead and grab this one because i am going to be doing a series on neck knives pretty soon and so I, I went ahead and grabbed this one and uh, got it for a steal of a price. And uh, it was cheaper than the Imtech version of the same exact knife. Imtech also makes this. And some other company also makes this. And they all charge more for it. And uh, I just went ahead and grabbed it. Obviously, it's been discontinued, I think. And there you have it. It's just a little five-inch little pig sticker with a... They say the blade is two and a half inches. Uh, let's see here. I guess depending on the way you measure it, well, two and a quarter inches, I guess, from here. But if you notice, this part here is not sharp. So if you want to live dangerously, you could actually get some fingers up on there. It is definitely double-edged, and it's blacked out. And uh, well, you can see right there. CBR346 China, and then the little combat ready symbol there. Um, definitely not the most comfortable knife to hold in your hand. Uh, I'll put that out there right away, especially considering why this is angled so much. I think, if anything, I would probably take a, a grinder and grind this down and make this rounded at the bottom so that you could actually put it in the palm of your hand uh, if you're going to actually be pushing with it, um, because it's not comfortable at all to hold, just kind of funky looking. Well, it looks cool, but once again, you know, uh, looking cool and feeling comfortable often do not go together. 
And that is a, uh, a thing I've noticed with a lot of neck knives. They want them to look cool, but they don't necessarily want to make them feel comfortable. The other thing I'm thinking of is um, investigating how this is uh, held captive in the sheath. And then possibly um, taking off the cord wrap and making a uh, wood handle or something or a, a G10 handle that extends a little further down uh, so that I have something better to grip onto than goofy cord wrapping and make this a little bit more functional as a, uh, as a uh, neck knife. Definitely not something I'm looking at as saying, oh, I gotta have one of these for the collection and it's gotta be in pristine condition or anything like this. I actually wanna turn this into something a little bit more functional. And part of that would probably mean uh, changing the handle shape a little bit or making that handle a little bit longer so that when you pull it out, it goes into your hand and it feels good. Cause right now it doesn't feel good in the hand. Any case, um, there you have it. Uh, my last five eBay purchases. A combat ready neck knife. The uh, Laol style picnic knife in white smooth bone. My Akoi River Sunfish. One of 500. My um, universal jackknife cigar cutter bartender tool. And finally, my um, Frost Family Series medium toothpick and probably some kind of buffalo horn. Um, so, what do you think? Uh, Interesting, definitely a, a little bit of a variety going on, I think. Um, really interested to know uh, what your last five knife purchases were. Uh, so if you're going to do that, let me know and I will definitely check out yours as well. Or if you don't have a YouTube channel, feel free to leave it in a comment below. Your last five knife purchases. That wasn't the cat's meow. I don't know what else I can do. Kitty says hi. Talk to you again soon. <laughs>